Someday I'm just gonna pop up from behind the table. Yes. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for over 40 years. Today I'm gonna test some straining gadgets and see if I can find a few ways to improve them. Help keep your fingers away from the pot. It can flower out. Probably give it a little more of a flare at the ends. These are the products I am going to test. Tofu press, spinner, clip strainers, pickle lifter, tifu. Tofu press. Its purpose in life is to squeeze all the water out of your waterlogged piece of tofu. If you're a tofu person, you know what I'm talking about. It's got on the edge here some O-rings, rubber O-rings. We've got a top piece which lays on top of the tofu. We have an internal strainer piece and we have this bucket to collect the water that gets squeezed out. Let's try it out. So I'm gonna start out using this piece of firm tofu. It's gonna be a little watery here to get this out, but I will do it. Let's give it an hour and see what we got. And we have one third of a cup. Let's see how the tofu press compares to using things you may already have in your kitchen. I've got a wire rack and I have an enamel pan. Again, this is the same firmness, it's firm tofu. I'm gonna take this entire pan and place it on the tofu. Probably if I was at home, I would give it an initial squeeze. Let's put this entire rig into the refrigerator for a bit, maybe an hour, and let's see what we got. This is what we got from the tofu press. This is what we got from the things you may already have in your kitchen. Where I had a third of a cup before, I have a third of a cup now. So I would say this was just as effective as the tofu press. In terms of effectiveness, I would give it a four out of five. I believe this will give you some crispy tofu. Now I'm gonna try it again with the left-handed oil test. It helps simulate someone who may have weakness, of course simulate slippery hands in the kitchen. It is a quick, quick, quick way to reveal some design deficiencies or opportunities for improvement. This is gonna be a bit of a difficult pull. Can't see that, but the bottom here is rounded, so the chance of this slipping off my fingers is pretty high. I'm straining, straining, straining. Okay, I got that one. So I don't think we need to go any further. I think we're gonna get the same exact result. The uh, bands are in place, the pressure is in place. It was just really the process that we're looking at with the left-handed oil test. In terms of usability, guess what? Let's give it a two. I really think there's no excuse for not designing this better and understanding that it's really gonna take quite a bit of pull in order to get this thing set up and in place. Two out of five. Let's talk about a redesign. This actually does have a lot of advantage. It's pretty concise. It actually fits in your fridge. It's a good way to store the tofu. All the redesign thoughts are gonna be coming out of the design of these clips. One obvious thing to do would be to keep the shape as it is, but extend this so that you actually have a pull ring on here that you can stick your finger in or that you can grab so that you're pulling on something a lot more secure rather than trying to get your finger under here and having this slip. I would also look at possibly giving it some leverage. I think there's a way to put a mechanism on here so that you've got a lever hanging out here that can be pulled down into place. As you come down with the clip, it is going to place it and apply the pressure. Maybe hard to see, but these O-rings actually have quite a bit of pull to them. And you don't want to eliminate that pull because that is what's giving the pressure on the tofu, but there definitely could be a way to ease that operation. It does have its faults, and I am a little concerned about people getting this home and not being able to apply the O-rings. Let's give it a three and a half. It's using this to strain your tofu. You may also be straining your fingers. Spinner. Spinner. What? Spinner. Sorry, I'm from New Jersey. Here we have spinner a salad spinner strainer. This is designed to strain and spin your fresh produce. First step is I'm going to fill this with some lettuce. Let's start spinning. Now this, this tub is a little small so you can hear some banging going on. And what we're doing here really is simulating a New York City size sink. Let's see how well we did with actually drying it. I'm gonna put it down here on this paper towel. Still is a bit wet, but I really don't see how this would be any more or less effective than a more traditional salad spinner. 
In terms of effectiveness, I would give the Spinna a five out of five. I think it does what it does. So what's nice about this is pushing and getting the spinning at a pretty good pace is rather effortless. I'm not gonna do a left-handed oil test because there's really no pressure involved here. So given the fact that I'm getting this to spin at what I perceive to be the same speed, the same rotational speed, as other salad spinners. I think it's gonna be as effective as any other salad spinner. In terms of usability, I'm gonna give it a couple of demerits. I don't like the way that it's not really clear which side folds. And also when it goes down, it doesn't lock that easily. I do like the minimal aspect of this and it does seem to work and spin pretty well. So, let's give it a 3.5, just slightly on the positive side. Let's talk redesign. Oh, not easy thing to trace. I'm gonna assume that the pitch of the spiral is pretty well worked out to make this easy to spin, but also to get some velocity with spinning. So I don't have any complaints with that. I'm gonna say something that may sound a little like frivolous or not too important, but I would change these whole patterns to something a little more graphic, a little more interesting. I think it would be nice just to give it a little bit of you know, more identity. What I would change though, is the way that this locks, uh, there is this thumb piece here, which I will draw, and there's a very tiny ledge here, and I would think seriously about maybe even putting an indent here, so you can really pull this up, but just give it a little more purchase area for your finger, so you can actually get a better grip on this, and you can close it up a bit better. Aside from that, there is this kind of curious grid pattern here, I would do something just to ensure that this part is easier to clean. And this has a bit of a secret of function here. When you pull this out, it's very difficult to see a graphic here, but there's a little lock unlock symbol here. It's not really clear that this function even exists. So I would do something here to make the graphic a little more visible just so that people realize that that's a thing that is possible to do. So in terms of a buy rating for Spinner, I would give it a three. I, there are some things that I like about it. I think it's not a bad thing to buy. I think it's okay. I am just not overly excited about it. Clip strainers. I have in front of me a set of clip-on pot strainers that allow you to boil different types of food all at once. This really gives the one pot meal a whole new meaning. Let's see how effective they are. Well, let's load up the baskets. I've got three sizes of baskets here. They say a watch pot never boils, and since you're all watching this, you're really slowing things down. Look away. Don't watch. Come back in a minute. So one thing to watch, in order for these baskets to work, the pot needs to be filled pretty high with water, and I'm a little concerned that if it starts boiling rapidly, it's gonna start spilling over the sides. I think the pasta below, at the bottom of the basket, may be a little more well done than the ones at top. So I realize you may not actually be making broccoli pasta and a hard boiled egg in the same session, but we're doing this in the interest of science. Seems a little softer than it should be, but let's cut it in half and see what we have. Yeah, it's a bit underdone. I'm not sure if that's because it was only partially submerged or not. So we're gonna try this again. This time using the Itsy Bitsy Spider, we're using significantly less water, and I have no question that everything is getting cooked evenly. Everything is submerged. I think we're pretty good. I actually do have quite a bit more pasta than I did previously. The size of the basket limited me to the amount of pasta I was able to fit. It is peeling better. I previously was underdone. Having the egg completely submerged helped a lot. It is done, I feel successful. And I am ready for my pasta, broccoli, and egg dinner. No sauce, no nothing. It's pasta, vegetables, and egg. Yum. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I've gotta give it a one. It created more problems than they solved. So usually I would do the left-handed oil test to check their usability. However, there's not a whole lot of physical interaction with these, so we will skip the oil. For usability, I would give it, let's do two out of five. Roll around the egg or move the broccoli around. You gotta watch the water level, make sure it doesn't boil over, yet you still have to make sure the water is deep enough so that you submerge the food. It just causes a little more issues than it solves. Let's talk about a redesign. Now, there are a couple of things that I think need some significant improvement here. One thing I would suggest is make these deeper. 
I would also think about if there was a way to put some metal feet on here because at least the metal would be touching the bottom of the pot and you wouldn't have to be concerned about melting or getting the bottom here too hot. I would also just think about ways to make it a little more secure to lift them up. You got a part here that's touching the pot, maybe even do a thing like that. And I think that will help keep your fingers away from the pot. We could still have this metal piece here to keep the heat away from the plastic part so that when you pick it up, you're just kind of really nested in your fingers. I would make sure this fully strains. And what I'm thinking is that the slots go right around the bottom. It would be kind of fun to work out some shapes to do that, give this thing a little bit of character. I don't know if that means little S shapes or something. Like I said, eliminate any chance for water to pool up in here. It's not a super sophisticated item. I just think it could use some design help. I bet you're wondering, hey, should I run out now and buy these? No. I would give them a one out of five. It's kind of interesting when you see a product that can be replaced by nothing. So I guess don't put all your eggs in one basket with these gadgets. Pickle lifter. I have in front of me the pickle lifter and it is designed to lift your pickles. No more pickle fingers. Let's load this baby up. Kosher dill, the world's best pickle. We're in New York, so I have to say that. I'm gonna remove a pickle and let's watch the magic begin. Here is my pickle lifter. I am going to start to eject the pickles. And I think once I'm at this point, I would now remove the pickle. Whoa. That worked fine when we're down to just one or two pickles. Would it behave any differently? No, they're lifting out just as easily. I think the thing you don't want to do is you don't want to lift this too high, otherwise you'll have pickle on the table. And there you have it. Was not that amazing. Let's compare the pickle lifter to things you may already have in your kitchen. One of them could be a jar of pickles and some tongs. Let's say you want a pickle. This jar screws open. Yeah. Tongs go in, pickle comes out. That seemed to work okay. You're having all your friends over and we're gonna have some pickles. You may actually be the pickle lifter. That seemed to work too. I don't see any advantage of this device when compared to pulling a pickle out of a jar. So effectiveness, nada. So normally I would challenge myself by making my non-dominant hand slippery and trying this again. I don't think it's gonna be that difficult, right-handed or left-handed. That's not its problem. Its problem is why. For usability, I would rate this one out of five. Why take it out of a glass jar to put it into a piece of plastic? Let's talk about a redesign. I would design this so that it starts out life a little bit wider. So it really will grab that pickle. This lifter on this piece, you can see there are little indents so that it fits in that direction. However, it does not fit in that direction for absolutely no reason. So of course, when you lift this up, your pickles are just gonna fall on the table. I wonder if this could be rethought to strain your pickles, but also as it comes out, whether it can flower out in the same way that a vegetable steamer will flower out. And in that way, it becomes a pickle presenter. I have a little bouquet of pickles that would still drain into your container. Makes you want to have a pickle party, doesn't it? In terms of a buy rating, I would give the pickle lifter a nothing. Sorry, you did nothing to elevate my pickle snacking experience. Tea, foo. Its purpose in life is the scoop and steep tea in a flash. So let's see how effective it is. There is a push latch here that allows me to release it to spring open. I push it, it seemed to open. I am going to fill half of this with tea. Now I'm gonna push this closed again. I'm gonna shake off a couple of tea leaves that clung to the outside and time to infuse. One of the main selling points of the tea foo is that you're able to squeeze the tea leaves for faster brewing. However, I'm not sure squeezing tea leaves is a good idea. You may have your own thoughts about that. But I do have some expertise. 
I drink nothing but tea at home. Squeezing a tea leaf or squeezing tea bags tends to get a little more acidic or a little more bitter. And I'm not gonna squeeze the tea leaves tight. I'm just gonna squeeze it enough to see if I can get the water flowing. With the size of the holes in here, I'm not sure stirring it is really getting a good water flow through there. So possibly it needs to be pumped. The other thing I'm noticing is when I go in here to squeeze it, I'm getting some rather sharp points into my palm. That's what it's designed to do, so I'll go with the flow here and I'm going to stand it up and I am ready to drink the tea. It's good, it's a little weaker than I would want it. Uh, I think maybe I didn't put in enough tea leaves, but that's not any fault of the tea foo. In terms of effectiveness, I would rate the tea foo four out of five, because how could it fail? All it needs to do is get some water flowing through the tea leaves. I'm not gonna bother trying this with a slippery left hand, because there's really nothing about this that's gonna slip. I will say though that whether you're using this uh, with your dominant or non-dominant hand, it's a little curious that if you were gonna squeeze this, or even if you're gonna pump it a little bit so that you get the water flowing, the plastic part, which feels a little better, is down in a spot where it's gonna make it more difficult. I would give it a three out of five, and the reason is I'm not thrilled about the fact that you can't see the tea leaves. Once they're in there and close it up, there's not a really good way to gauge how full it is. Let's talk about a redesign. And I am going to start with the feet, and I'll tell you why, because I'm still feeling it, the pinching that I got from those feet into my hands. If the reason for this to exist is so that I could squeeze it, then I would create a shape here that is a little friendlier to your hand and palm when squeezing it. So I would make this round, not pointed. I would also increase this hole size to make sure that there is circulation. I would give this a one because I don't think I would recommend that anybody rushes out to buy this. I think it needs some evolution before it's really at a point where it's gonna be a super cool little device. Here's the real tea. Don't buy this. Once again, I think people are designing things where they don't actually spend enough time in the kitchen. I think some of these just miss completely and a couple of these are near misses. Don't think anything is coming home with me. Well, maybe spinner, because it's kind of fun to play with. Is it real or is it a dream?